Oofdang. Not a um, particularly juicy pack one pick one. I think Grist is the best card here, but you, don't, you really don't really want to be in green black most of the time, or at least I don't. Uh, followed by like Toxic or Marsh Flats. I think we need to take Bitter Union. I like the red cards a lot. Maybe take Mind Twist here, go into red black. Red black's usually pretty good. And again, we're not married to this bitter reunion, but black red with uh, black red reanimator. Bitter reunion fits really well. Bitter reunion discarding sword of the mink could could do that. Then give all the thopters haste. What? One of my opponents used it to give goblin welder haste earlier. That's kind of cool. And then fizzled the welder activation with a besiege you. Pretty cool. Goblin welder is a complicated complicated card. Works on your opponent's things. Both targets need to be legal when the, and the ability resolves. We got this here mind twist or him to draw come. Follow up the mind twist pick. Couple solid blue cards in that pack, huh? The ninja, the mana link. No reason to deviate from black yet, but worth noting. Oh, you want to draft actual Turok? Mmm, me too. I think we want the same thing. Yeah, that card's good. The pro white matters less often in cube than it does in constructed. Because so much removal people want to play in constructed is like solitude and white ley line and prismatic and swords and stuff. Hmm. Haven't really been seeing reanimator stuff. Bone shards would be good in that shell. But we're not necessarily that shell, right? The other options here are like Remand, Mentor, Proving Ground. I think we take the Shards. Could be played even if we're not Reanimator. Kind of similar to Bitter Union in that regard. Solid removal spell is solid. You want a bacon cheeseburger? I think you and me want the same thing. Yeah, a lot of blue black stuff going around. I should really be blue, huh? My blue black decks haven't been trophying lately. But black red hasn't felt especially open. Ugh. All this blood, as I say, as a blood crypt comes along. I think it's still Lily here. Blue cards still flowing. I think blue cards are not going to flow from the other direction, hum, based on what's been cut. There's a solid chance we try to go mono black, and there's also a solid chance that we end up adding white because white's always open. This color here. I think I'm going to jam the Ophiomancer. Could play well if we get a Yawgmoth or something. Ophiomancer is just good. A removal spell. Don't mind if I do. Blood Tithe would play well in Black Red Reanimator. Maybe we're just Mono Black, huh? Maybe that just works. Discard, removal. Some threats. What else do you need, right? Toxic Wheeling is a good sign. I always wondered if any of these guys played magic. Seems pretty straightforward. They're named after Gygax, you know, which was D and D. But they have a couple song names, like Liliana, and then some spells in D and D overlap with with magic, like Chain Lightning. They got a song called Chain Lightning. It's probably a big overlap, right, between D and D players and. MTG, MTGers, Mutigers. If I end up mono black, I, I do like the Meat of Alt. Rip Pack Rat, hum. They have no songs called Emrakul, no. No, no, no. Where's that Turok we were talking about? I kind of feel like I can wheel the Turok and should take Smuggler's Copter here. That's how I feel. We'll see if my feeling pans out. Vamp, snuff out, unearth. I do like vamp and snuff out a bit better than unearth. 
Or no, just keep with Void Walker. Free spells are pretty sweet. We'll snuff out. What are we going to for? Mind Twist, maybe. That could be real, huh? Just do our Mind Twist, get them every game. Hey, Harrison, Burger PM, thanks for $4.20. Harrison says, Stip, draft whatever the fuck you want, but listen to this song as you do it. Fair enough, fair enough. I think we're more likely to wield the snuff, huh? I'll take the vamp. The Promised End would be a sweet song title, yeah. You're always on the free spell train. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Looking at Urborg and Urza's Saga. Let's play this here song request from Harrison Berger. Mm, some Dorian Ketchens. I'm into it. Hey, Jalik. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 36 months. Yeah, we're not currently a Saga deck, but we could, could become one pretty easily. Bitter Blossom and Umazawa's here, huh? What did I name my child after a planeswalker? I don't think so. I would want I would want to set my kid up with a name that would like promise them success in the real world. Like Darth Vader. That'd be a sick name. Skull clamp with Ophium Answer. Maybe wheel that bitter blossom, huh? Jadar works really well with that clamp. We're going to take this Turok that we wanted to wheel. Perfect. Clamp, clamp, uh, clamp something for the socket to grab, too. Let's see if we can get that Bitter Blossom wheel. There's a recurring Nightmare in the pack. So there's a chance we get a really late Bitter Blossom here. Nice. Digging the Urborg. Uh, I don't like steps where you don't have agency, bury the dead. It kind of defeats a lot of the purpose of drafting, right? Like half of it. <laughs> like the fun part. <laughs> drafting with constriction is a lot more fun than, than not drafting at all. I could see boarding in Containment Priest against Reanimator. If they're like hard Reanimator. How old is Vintage Cube? Hey, the bit of Blossom I wanted. Are you talking about the Magic Online Vintage Cube? Because that started back in 2012. So, 12 years. But people have been drafting Cube for a while before it hit Moto. Funnily enough, the person who first brought Vintage Cube to Magic Online is now currently... Working at Daybreak. And he oversees it there. Very cool, huh? What about the tar pit? Does the tar pit mean you can splash a time walk? We have a vamp for it. Vamp for the time walk. I can see that happening. Grief's pretty good, though. I was going to drop Grief. I'm fine with pretty good. Keep the mono black dream. It's a good dream, right? That's a good dream. Maybe we'll get a Chrome Mox or something for our generosity. It is a great Bob deck. One of our fours is even a two drop, hum. Huh? Dark Ritual would be sick here, too. Some more shitty artifacts for Saga would be sweet. Ooh, a Shieldred. Not going to say no to a Shieldred. Yeah, I think Shieldred and Orcs are the two best black cards in the cube. With like Thoughtseize below them. Not super in love with this saga so far. It was only clamped to grab. You know, low artifact count overall. If we get a second artifact, though, I'll be happy with it. Doesn't have to do a lot, right? There's a saga. Oh, that's a sick Yogmoth. With Bitter Blossom and Ophiomancer spitting out tokens, it's a sick Yogmoth. Yeah, only one turn one discard spell. No real ways to jump our curve. Those are my main concerns here. I guess we've got grief. We can just grief them. Maybe that reanimation effect in my sideboard got better with the grief add. Life death. 
like, kind of like Beseech here. I, I kind of like Caracas here. I'm going to draft Caracas. Tired of losing to this card. I'd like to frustrate one of my opponents now. Not really my pack, is it? The Splash Fractured Identity. I'm not looking for a Talisman, no. No, Chromox, you can get super late sometimes. I think that'd be our ideal pickup around this point. But uh, the equipment that gains life, Spear, whatever, Shadow Spear, that'd be a good one to help juice up the Saga. Or another one-mana discard spell, like a Duress, would be really helpful. Oh, Shadow Spear, nice. Yeah, the Deep Cavern Bat doesn't solve any problems for the deck. We have plenty of stuff to do on turn two. But the Shadow Spear makes me a lot more excited about the Urborg, and the Life Gain is pretty relevant here. Nice, Necromancy. There's Troll, too. Troll's also great. Necromancy, like, we don't have a ton to reanimate besides the Grief. And the Shield, if they manage to answer it. But we can also get the opponent's things. And we have a shitload of discard. I think it's just going to be good here. So I need one more. I need a cut here. They might be Rankle. I think the Hanger Banks is zero for Bob. I also like how it plays with Skull Clamp and um, and Yawgmoth, so I'm not going to cut the Hanger Bank. Maybe Vamp 2 does the cut. Like, it's just getting Mind Twist for the most part. Damnation's a great sideboard card. Makes me feel better about passing up that Masker Girl. Nah, Martin. We have enough utility lands here, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I love Doreen. Yeah, the issue with nurturing Peatland in this in this deck is you got like Bitter Blossom going and Toxic Deluge and Yog. They all use our life, right? We I mean, have some life gain to balance it out, but it can be really brutal if you only have like three lands and one of them's a horizon land. And you just have to die while your opponent attacks you. Yeah, a little bit of fast mana would have gone a long ways here. Hell yeah, Harrison. Quite a talented performer, hum. Maybe Toxic's the side out. Probably boarded in every round. Kinda got something though. Some mono black awesome. We've got like equipments to equip and stuff. We got we have uses for our mana. Three spell lands. I really want a him on two, but him is kind of nastier if you have the void walker down. So I'm gonna try and go for that. Now I kind of feel like him to track is not going to resolve. I played it anyway. Oh shit, it did resolve. We got to see Skip Leveler. Yeah, I guess I play that, huh? The game has ended. Awesome. Good stuff. <laughs> Turn three kill. Just that easy. All right. Uh, right back. Again, again. Yeah, I hope so. I think we're going to vamp for grief here. Go turn two Dothy. Grief pitch shielded. I 
Now Van for Grief and pitch Ophiomancy. I play a discard spell on my turn too, because it does stop them from tinkering. Vamp's card disadvantage, grief is card disadvantage. Dang. They were ready, they were prepared. I think I was supposed to grab this Golos, huh? Yeah, like, is this about the Magic the Gathering Liliana? That's what I want to know. Malcolm being a legend, Tom. Why didn't I fucking use Bob to cruise Smuggler's Copter? Oh, it's because I wanted to get this and play out Shieldred and then have a Smuggler's Copter blood to block Malcolm. That's what I wanted to do. It worked very poorly for me. Wonder what they got for me here, huh? Yeah, we didn't miss our land drop there. Was this a Blista? No. Just throwing away their looter. Maybe they just like, really wanted that loot, huh? Attacks you, so I can't clear the Karn and get the jewel. Huh. They have one in. It's gotta be shielded, right? No shit, Mark. What are you fucking... Why are you making that comment? What What are you attempting to gain from that? Do it all? I can't do it all. One thing in between kicking Turok or, um, or playing the shielded out. You can only do one of those two things. And then when you're playing the Liliana... You have to choose between edicting them or upticking, right? If you are playing Liliana. Or you could pair like Shieldred plus Inquisition. Leave up Mutabolt activation. To make sure they don't get the jewel back. There's like a ton of things to decide here. With the limited mana we have available. Yeah, so we Liliana edict them. They sack the germ and then Karn down ticks. And they put the Nettle Cyst on the creature. And then I have to trade my Shieldred. Unless I leave Mutabolt back. I kind of don't hate the Turok. But then Turok and Mutaball might be, both be chumping, huh? Let's kick Turok and then Leon Enix them. Sick. We'd also leave them on the um, Black Mirror, huh? We'd also leave them out, as it were. Well, that's terrifying, huh? Yeah, that Archon's gonna fuck me up. So when winter came, the, the frost and snow would be like a natural preservative. And then when uh, when 
my folks wanted Brussels sprouts for dinner. It was like my job to go out into the snowbank and like dig them out and take them out in the cold. Hated that shit. Never seasoned or anything. I did not grow up on a Brussels sprouts farm. One thing that my mom wanted, really wanted to do, which I did like, was that she wanted to, uh, us to grow as much of our produce and food as possible. So we moved out into the country, and we did grow like a shitload of vegetables and stuff. No peaches. We did have some currant bushes, a lot of raspberries. And a crab apple dream. I wonder if I'm supposed to wrinkle them or shield it here. I'm not actually sure which one gets some more damage, right? Shielded. Shielded if they like. We start letting them draw the pounds here if it lives that long, right? Can you eat crab apples? Uh, not well. They're very sour. But if you want a bite of something sour, it's sort of like asking if you can eat lemons or whatever, right? Yeah, but you're not going to eat, eat them the same way that you would like an apple. Crab apple pie? Oh yeah, if you use like a shitload of sugar, you can make anything food, right? If you boil the tannin out, acorns aren't bad. That's where all the vitamins are. You're just boiling out all the good vitamins. We keep on drawing this Void Walker and it keeps on being awesome for me. I almost want to like play on Earth for it, just it specifically. Strawberry rhubarb pie. Oh, that's one of my favorite favorites. One of my very favorites. We would pick so many strawberries in the in the summer. And I loved them. And we just had rhubarb just like growing around everywhere. Basically a weed. Rhubarb apple pie, also dope. We had friends who ran an apple orchard, and my grandparents ran an apple orchard. So we just always had like shitloads of apples. As a kid, I would make uh, fruit leather out of all the extra applesauce we had and stuff. And um, I would sell it to the kids at school. A little side hustle. That must have been so popular. That was probably probably the most popular thing I ever did. You're allergic to anything from a tree? Wow. That's like a wide variety of things. Oh yeah, we made apple butter. For sure. Usually we received it as gift though. My grandma really liked making it. That's tasty stuff. All stiffed up tonight, spicy meatball. I already got a couple in, but thank you. Another day for sure. Oh yeah, Jack Cal Kobe. There's a survival show that I watch. Where um, very often contestants will like try and hoard berries for the winter, and they have to um, like find a place that like bears and stuff won't get at them. And they have to make sure they don't rot, too. So, like, a lot of times, they'll end up losing some to spoilage and mold and stuff. And I'm always, like, wondering why they don't make fruit leather. Because it's not like you need anything fancy for that, right? It's just dehydrated fruit. And then in a, one of the recent seasons, this old lady does. It made me so happy. I was like, yes. <laughs> I think we're just hemming on two, huh? As much as I want to play these other cards. Yeah, it sounds tasty, Prometheus. I 
Is fruit leather like fruit by the foot? In appearance, maybe. Is this a blended fruit that's dehydrated on a sheet? So it could like roll up like fruit by the foot. But it typically doesn't have like a shitload of sugar in it. Like added, you know, it's not it's not candy, it's it's fruit. Oh man. I think I'm about to get rocked here. Well, if they reanimate Archon. Oh, they're corpse dancing. Okay. I was thinking we could have Liliana Enicton, but. Actually, do we want to have been Bob? Is Bob too much life damage? We're taking a lot here from Archon. This is fine. I don't the bone shards. Shorakai. Oh, fuck. That would have been a hard one to answer. I guess we're just missing the white, huh? Correct. I do not consider fruit by the foot fruit. <laughs> this is a marketing gimmick, right? Yeah, right, ugly paintings. It's like 2% real fruit or whatever. It's like calling Sunkist fruit juice or something. Candy cigarettes? Candy cigarettes are basically vitamins. I always thought cigarettes should be uh, marketed to miners more. Hard day working in the mines. Light up a cigarette. Hey, Value Engine 11, thanks for the two months there. You're tired of throwing your game, so you figured you'd chill and watch for a bit? Hey, yeah. Let somebody else throw for a bit, huh? Take the load off. They've got some bounce, so I don't want to like jam all my all my counters here. But I want to get some, you know. I want to pressure them. This mean vault is putting in wearing. You notice how I played my land on my second main phase too, right? Like they bounce mean vault mid combat. I want to be able to replay it. Opponent staring at a hand that's like damnation. Just a bunch of sorcery speed removal. Well, they already Archon, so we're gonna in Entuma Palm. Shielded, sure. <laughs> that resolves. <laughs> excellent, excellent stuff. What the fuck? Yeah, we just gotta take this Oko, right? Take this Oko, and then hopefully, hopefully we find, like, actual Turok to shred this fucking hand, because Jesus. It's a lot of answers to a Voidwalker.
And we're not going to play Voidwalker on two. We're going to damn their... They're halflings, so they can't like get in with Charter Course and get that value. Voidwalker just dies if it matters anyway. Would you prefer Bratwurst, Curry, or Mashed Potato Vape? Oh, Curry for me. Excellent choices, though. I went to an Indian place recently where I got a um, an old-fashioned that they made with curry. Not the actual curry, but like curry spices. It was fucking delicious. It was made with uh, whiskey deems there, if that's what you're asking. Like I said, it was made with curry spices at an Indian restaurant, so you can kind of check the check the um, the non-typical box when figuring out what kind of old-fashioned it is, right? I was really hoping we were going to find a discard spell and wouldn't just have to run my stuff into the removal. Oh well. A black cherry whiskey bait. That sounds tasty. So we can um we can do a lot better against that kind of hand. But we need to find cards like him to truck. Cards like um actual truck. You know, we need to be we need to be able to like shred their hand so our things can actually resolve and we can win. Shieldred's a little bit butter, bit bigger than a lot of the removal accounts for. Yeah, we have mind twist in here too, you know, and Vamp Tutor to find it all. I think on average we're gonna get some of that rolling. Bitter Blossom is pretty good against the removal suite too. So we get Bitter Blossom rolling with Umazawa's or Clamp or something. We should be good to go as well. I like Necromancy on their Fury. Hopefully that lines up, huh? We saw a Mana Dork, a Fury, and that Flip Saga that makes two twos. I don't think it's enough for these sweepers. It looked like they had like a like a core spell base, you know, like they could be like an Uro deck or something. Have we drawn Mind Twist yet? Um, I don't remember. I should get Bitter Blossom. Hopefully I don't regret that. The other line is to just go get either him to Turok or Mind Twist here. Well, we have Umazawas to pair with the, the Bitter Blossom. I think that's going to work out well.
do we got it? Chain Lightning lost to the Dothy. So at least that's not pumping the Goyfi at home. Feels like a solid time to run out the Saga. I definitely think it's correct to kill that halfling. With no extra info here. The best answer that we saw to Umazawa's out of their deck so far was that Oko. Oh, that's pretty good too. Interesting that they didn't kill Bitter Blossom last turn. Maybe they just drew it. This Goyf's about to get pretty large with Saga dying and stuff, but we can start jumping too. I'm going to take this hit and then start jumping, I think. Oh, shit, what up? Hey, Chloe W. Wisconsin. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 23 months. It is indeed Cuban time. The format I'm playing isn't on Arena, Dinsam. I think I had to keep this thing here. I was playing on activating and running out Dark Confident here, but... Looks like they were sandbagging Questing Beast because of the onboard Krakus. Jamie was just a time walk. Yeah, I think they realized that if they cracked the clue token, I could use Krakus to bounce Turok, and then I would just get the card that they drew. God, maybe that Shadow Spear is nuts, huh? This board's actually like pretty vulnerable to Fury. This board that I created for myself. Should just like let that extra fairy back home. We're not equipped, maybe. Hell yeah. This is for game three. This is for the, the trophy right here. It's pretty sick. They had a solid draw that time too. I like how we got to like Game one, I got completely destroyed, but I like mapped out like the cards that I needed, the sort of cards that I wanted to draw that I thought would play better in the matchup. And then we had that, right? We had Bitter Blossom going with Umazawas, getting value, being like resistant to the removal. And then we had like discard going. The good cards. Yeah, I think the discard is pretty good against them. I do kind of want a sweeper on the draw. Maybe Bob dies to too much. Weird to cut Bob in this tank, it's so good. What non creatures did we see? Oko? Oko's pretty real. We have like bone shards for it. Oh, fun, Despiring. Do you know who won? You do not need to draw more lands here, huh? This is the sort of hand where you see it and you're like, damn, I should have brought that damnation in, huh? <laughs> I should have run the sweepers. Good to know about Pyrokinesis. 
Grief might even match up well against it. Jabro won? Oh, cool. Yeah, I played a solid amount of cube with Jabro. I've not with Jerry T, but I, I played against Jerry a few times back on the... Um, back on the SCG circuit. I want to play the Mutable so they don't, like, don't serve with these, but I'll feel silly if they smack me with Questing Beast here. And they might rip a red spell and just serve an immutable anyway. All happy to pyrokinesis it. Oh, they haven't played Delighted Halfling yet. Cool. Kind of hate this. we're losing two like high value cards but we flip the liberator back and if we fade a chain lightning off the top <laughs> it would look really good huh with the pyrokinesis god damn it Yagmoth would be so good on this board. This is kind of the same as just, yeah, this is getting back the grief to trade with the Liberator. Is Mutaball going to hard carry again? That's served, though. So confident. Right, I'll, I'll respect it. Playing around by like Flame Slash or something by waiting. Hate that for me. So if I'm right about them having a sorcery speed removal spell, like they were representing with that one attack, then we'll probably see that the Stink or the Ophimancer get destroyed here. Yeah, Flame Slash. This fucking game, huh? This fucking game.
you like blocking Affling and then using him as I was on it. Yeah, that would been solid. Tense game indeed. Memory Lab's doing a fine impression of a time walk there. I guess we still got our attack in. So if we only had one counter on the Zumazawas, we would have it kill itself, so the FTK would have to kill itself. As is, I think we're supposed to pump the Snake token, because it's my only threat here. And then we just, like, Liliana Edict them. Or no, we pump the Snake token, we die to this Chariot, right? We just pump Snake token here. We just super die to this Chariot, and then just crew and kill me. Or I'd have to bounce it with Caracas. Well, we bounce it with Crocus. Liliana can uptick and eat it. So hold on. What does that leave me with? Either one leaves, has me lose the snake token, but I think if we pump here, then that leaves me with the snake token and more, like like two counters instead of one counter. I understand that I'm going to have a Lily either way. I, I understand I'm going to draw a card. We're talking about the Umazawa's counters, right? Because right now, if I down tick Uli Umazawa on my snake token, then the FTK has to kill itself. And then we have an Umazawa's with one counter. But I think if we double pump, then they point it there. But then we'll still have it to attack with, and then they, they you know, they trade. So I think that's better. Because we get the two counters from the trade. We're going to bounce Chariot Ugly Paintings. Catch up, friends. If they don't crew, I mean, that's good for us. <laughs> if they don't crew, it's better. Because then we little on an edict, and then what do they do, right? Actually, this is fucking insane. I was thinking about the snake trading with the FTK, but that just, like, super doesn't happen now, huh? And now the Umazawas can clear the FTK. We are vulnerable to a burn spell off the top, like fire or whatever. We are certainly ahead on board. Yeah, I don't know why I thought I'd be trading here. But I'm glad I went for this line instead of the killing snake token in response. I'm not worried about questing beast off the top because we have Caracas to bounce it. Nice. Nice. Them hitting a land here means that the we're at a functionally five life, right, with the Umazawa's counters. Um, I think I'd rather hold on to that than discard it. The snake token's putting in work, huh? I'll have a card that Ophiomancer. Yeah, if they don't play out the tracker, then I uptick and, and they've been in, so they'd rather force me to eat a Tom from their perspective. Yeah, for whatever reason, one lucky ghoul. I thought that the um, the snake was going to be ending up trading with the FTK in combat. If they hadn't crewed the chariot and served in, then like Liliana Edict puts them in the same spot too, right? And they can crew the chariot and get destroyed. Whew. 
Pew. <laughs> Sorry about blowing on my mic there. Well, there's a second trophy for the day. That was a tight one, huh? That was a tight one. We can all unsqueeze our anuses now. Holy shit, unclench everybody. Let's get one more draft in. Model Black taking it down. That was a sick black deck, right? I was a little bit worried about not having early game...